garbanzo bean waffles. The ingredients are two to two and three quarters cups water, one cup of regular rolled oats or buckwheat, one cup of soaked garbanzo beans or soybeans, one half cup of coconut, optional, two tablespoons of sweetener, one teaspoon of vanilla, optional, and one half teaspoon of salt. Garbanzo bean waffles. I'm just a little, I'm trying to wrap my mind around beans and waffles. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trusting you because so far your recipes have been yummy. Okay. So I'm trusting you. So tell us about the ingredients and then we'll talk some more. Okay. Well, I did bring these waffles for my team. We'll tell you more about the team a little later. Yeah. Uh, I just served them at breakfast and I asked them, guess what's in them? Mm -mm. They thought they were regular waffles made with wheat flour and all that. So. Okay. Something about turning them into a waffle just <laughs> makes them, you can't tell. Well, you know, it's great because you're, you're, it, it's a healthy dish. And again, we'll talk about the ingredients in a bit, but it's healthy and it's breakfast. It's breakfast. It's That's breakfast. the goal. So, so what's in it? So we have some garbanzos. Okay. These we just soaked overnight. Dried garbanzos you buy in any grocery store. Um, if you need to quick soak them, bring them to a simmer, take it off the stove, let them set for one hour. It's just the same as soaking them overnight. Ah. So we've got one cup of soaked garbanzos here. Then we have one cup of oats. Mm. Our unbleached sugar here. Mm -hmm. A little bit of salt. Coconut is optional yes. in this recipe. We're going to leave it out. Thank you, because I'm allergic to coconut okay. flakes. So, and I want to taste it. Which means we're going to use less water. The recipe called for two to two and three quarter cups. We're going to lean toward the two and we'll check it as we go. Okay. We're going to start with a little less than what we think we need. Okay. And then we will play with it. And that's great. You can adjust it. Like some people like me are allergic to coconut, and so that's they don't right. have to have it in there. But absolutely, if you like coconut, it's probably a great addition. Yes, mm -hmm. add some flavor. Let's see. So if it's too Looks thick, good. you add water, and if yes. it's too thin. Do you add more oats, or do you, if you can't do the coconut, what, what you could you add, do? You could add a little more oats. Okay. I think the best thing to do would be to start with less water, mm. and then just watch your blender. Right. When you make the waffles, if they come out a little heavy and dense, mm -hmm. for your second one, add a little bit water, maybe nice. a tablespoon or two. Whiz it up again, and then, nice, and then nice. do it. So you, after your first one, you kind of will get a feel for if that's right for that batter. Right. So we're just going to give it a quick spray. Uh-huh. This recipe does not work well in a Belgian waffle maker. Oh. This needs to be your traditional size waffle. Okay. okay. And you always start in the center. Start in the right. center. You don't want to go all the way to the end. Right. Because it will explode out of your waffle iron. Wow. Now, nice. the beans in here actually act like a leavening. When they cook, they will, uh, they, they expand. Even oh. though they're, even though they're uh, blended up like this, I try to avoid using baking powder and baking soda in my recipes because mm. those destroy the B vitamins in our food. Okay. So these are actually a steam raised waffle. Huh. So the steam is actually puffing it up? Yes. Nice. If, you know, you can see my steam here. It's going yeah. like this, right? Yeah. Well, it's the same. And you can actually see, can you see how it's lifted the plates? I can. It has risen inside yes. here. So you pour it, your plates come down flat in a very short time. Yeah. You're raised. Okay. It takes about four minutes. So I want to talk a little bit about these waffles. They mm -hmm. freeze very well. You know, that is a great feature because you can buy, when you buy frozen waffles, they have all this junk in them. You're you know, right. my rule of thumb is if you can't pronounce what's in your food, don't buy it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and so they have all these ingredients. This is so healthy. It has whole whole food ingredients in here. And then you can freeze them so you don't have to eat them all at once. That's right. You can have them for another day. That's that's a win-win too. Yes. I love that. So See, this, you're making the breakfast easy for it's us. It's got to be easy. Mm -hmm. And then to reheat them. So if you froze them, just plug your waffle eye in, in for maybe a minute, pull it out, 
just like your store-bought waffles. Just put it in here for maybe a minute and they come out as crisp and nice as if you've um, just made them. Huh. You don't have to re-spare the waffle iron, which means you don't have to re-wash your waffle right, iron. Right. So it's another fast way to do your breakfast. Right. You'd have it right there. And you know, it's good to get the fiber we've been talking about in mm -hmm. breakfast. Beans have that extra fiber. You also have that protein boost. And for people with diabetes or something like, you know, a lifestyle disease, mm -hmm. beans are actually a very nice addition to a breakfast. And this way they're hidden in your waffle. Yes, yes, because again, beans can slow down the digestion of, of glucose, the assimilation of glucose. That's and right. So that really helps the fiber. It's got fiber and protein, beans. So you're getting a twofer. That's right, that's right. <laughs> and if you don't really taste garbanzo beans in your waffles, it's like, you know what I'm saying? That's like a win-win too. Absolutely. So that's great, that's great. Now I have tried making these with other beans and grains. My favorite way to make them, mm -hmm. I'm just watching my light here. Yeah. My favorite way to make them is with soaked soybeans. Ah. And instead of oats, I use buckwheat groats. Oh. That's actually what I served my team. Okay. They had no idea that it was soy and buckwheats, and most people would say soy and buckwheat. Yeah. But it becomes indistinguishable. Right. And you go. also, you're not using genetically modified soy. That's correct. Because that that's is right. a big thing recently. You know, the discussion, here's a plate too. Let's pull we'll that out. It. Ooh. Ooh, see, that's a real mom right there who can touch a hot waffle. <laughs> <laughs> can you see, Yvonne, can you see all the air holes in these? Yeah. They are light I'm gonna and taste crispy. It. Okay. Yay. We're going to make toppings for them in just a minute, but if you want to... I wonder if I should wait. Sneeze. I'll wait for the top. Okay, you're going to okay. wait for the top. Yeah, I'll wait for the top. All right. If you are interested in inviting Leslie Kaza to your church for a cooking seminar or to help your community to attain a healthier lifestyle, you can contact her at 4204 Jackson Avenue, Memphis, Tennessee, 38128. That's 4204 Jackson Avenue, Memphis, Tennessee, 38128. You can call her at 731-798-1106. That's 731-798-1106. Or you can email her at leslie.caza at gmail.com. Book. I do. Tell us about the cookbook. The cookbook has about 160 recipes in it. 130 of them are gluten free for those who need that. Mm. And we didn't plan it that way. That just the way it worked out. So they're yummy and the, many of them are gluten free and there's a big variety from breakfast to desserts. Oh, that's so good. If you're transitioning and you want to know how to cook some really good vegan meals, get her cookbook and just practice. Make it your, your, make your kitchen your laboratory. There right? we go.